And it's this is kind of what's... That's the thing. This is what's interesting as well about where Bloom is and loses as well. Because so even sort of past Longo, he's got to face two people who have beat him before on multiple occasions. Maze Bean's obviously having you know, a few sets against him. Pelly also having a few sets against him. And even though they are typically you know, Bloom favored, they are still strong feds. As is Longo, of course, who is our reigning champion from the last Tea Party. And while the 1-0 record maybe paints his story, that is only one set, and it was nearly six months ago. Yeah, we're seeing <laughs> the classic uh, aspect of all Rob matchups. Fun fact, Smart, uh, Rob is big. He's very big. Being He's big, huge, even. When you're fighting Bayo, means you are going to get stuck in the blender, in the washing machine, for a long time, watching the cutscene of Bayo comboing your entire life. As we say, Longo oh my God. defending his title as the Tea Party 2 champion. We love seeing Longo over here in the UK. A really, really impressive Rob player. I love watching uh, Longo play Rob. He's got this sort of like the technical aspect, but <laughs> speaking of uh, technical combos, a fair one, two, three, actually nearly oh killed Oh my it. Oh, God. Oh no, he's back. Uno reverse back. card, he's back. <laughs> he's back. Because not only Call an ambulance. Oh wait, it's still going, it's still going. The combo never actually me. entered. No, regardless, of course, you know, Bloom can take him down there, but Rob has one of the best recoveries in the game, so just going to find his way all the way back. But this is still a very scary position, oh. even scarier when you're met with a giant fist to the face as well. That was an outrageous F-Smash there, really catching the uh, Longo's uh, robotic head would just be peeking just below the, uh, the lip of the stage to get hit by that F-Smash. And now we're seeing Bloom <laughs> fishing for his combo starters. That side B put in a lot of work, because once the... Uh, once the cutscene starts, you can get so much damage on Rob. There's only so many uh, kind of DI and SDI uh, traps you can use to get out of the, uh, the Bayo stuff. But and certainly we're seeing here from Longo as well. Like he's definitely kind of slowed it right down as well. He is kind of recognizing like, okay, yeah, don't throw us through stocks. I just got caught in, uh, in all of these witch shows. I was just taking a million and one percent. So I'm just going to kid take my time a little bit. Throw a sort of gyro, throw a projectile kind of to slow down, not really retreat, you know, commit to too much. Does go for these kind of safe moves like the forward air and the down tilt, but otherwise kind of just slow it down. But even despite that mode, Bloom uh, with Bayonetta is almost able to be kind of everywhere on the stage all at once. He's yeah. able to just chase you down no matter where you go, and that's exactly oh. what we're seeing here. Oh, we're seeing that upper there. I think there was nearly going to be a, a very weird sort of cheesy kill there from uh, Longo. But yeah, as you say, I think... Um, Bloom has such a command of uh, Bayonetta, but I think with all of Bloom's characters, not just the Bayo, yeah. it's the it's the movement and it's the tricky kind of mix-ups and the little uh, the fade in and out of entering the uh, the danger zone. Because you know Rob's CQC options: scrub the floor, yes. press down tilt, yep. down tilt, down tilt, down tilt. Oh wait, what? Oh, I and the drop shield. That will be it. Yeah, it was almost like a low. He's gonna survive, but no, the. Uh, Jabs just coming out and going to seal up that game. A very commanding game as well for Bloom there, as he really just kind of never let up at any point. He was just chasing down Longo every single bit of the stage. Yeah, I think there are some situations where Rob, against some characters, when he's doing his advantage state, he's kind of not forcing absolute frame perfect true combos, yeah. but kind of like general, like really strong strings and advantage. Bayonetta, of course, with the, uh, the bats within. If Longo's not absolutely frame perfect with the uh, the zero to death strings, Bloom can of course escape with the bats within, which means that if Longo is going to go for the crazy the crazy gyro nep uh, punish game setup, he has to be basically task level perfect on a lot of the stuff against uh, against Bloom. Yeah, he's starting off at this game two, and again Longo just slowing it right down, not going for too much, not for too crazy. Bloom does arrive though, starts to get a little bit of damage going. The first witch to his hits, but not actually leading into too much here. Longo on his own, but the bat within, saving Bloom obviously from being hit by that down tilt, getting caught by any sort of grabs or anything like that. But of course, the instant do notice as well. Gyro is very, very good for just stopping those grounded with, uh, side beads as well, which is what Bloom likes to do to kind of just start up a lot of his combos. He'll obviously go sort of side along ground, catch you in the witch twist, and that is when a lot, basically, the cutscene starts. But Longo recognizes that. Go for the gyro, go for some things like the laser as well. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my okay, God. Super oh, Smash Logo. Bros. Ultimate at its best there. <laughs> witch time, spot dodges, down smashes. Yeah, Longo taking a lead here, but 
Oh, uh, well. Is that going to be last? Uh, well, yeah. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not going to last. But no, I, I agree, Smart. I think um, what Rob has to do in this matchup, and I think what Long was doing really well so far, is that I know that obviously he has the really good CQC options. He is the zoner that also is a boxer, yes, which is crazy. Exactly. Thank you, balance team. But anyway, the fact, the fact is that he's trying to kind of put the gyro down. As you say, it stops the uh, approaching side Bs. He, you know, Rob, he wants to kind of play at this sort of mid-range with the projectiles, and then when he's uh, in those scramble situations, he's got some of the frame data to uh, to compete with Bayo, but it's just the risk reward can be so scary, because oh. once you get hit once by Bayo, you enter a world of pain. Because that's the thing, like, w what we saw, all of that started because Longo tried to sort of box up close. He didn't set up any kind of gyro or anything like that. So Bloom was just able to, you know, kind of enter from within, Find all that cutting, and that led to almost death as well. And potentially even a stock here, not quite with the four there's not gonna find the stock just yet. It's interesting we saw at the start of this top eight, uh, or this top five even, Bloom Forever playing against Hollow, really struggling to kill. I feel like um, for the most part, I mean, you know, commentators curse we'll see here, but Bloom <laughs> has generally, <laughs> there it is. generally there it speaking, is. Uh, not been killing at super high percents, I would say. He's getting a lot of the confirms, kind of getting a lot of roll hits, kind of fares to finish off the top or the side, but yeah. this is the first moment as we've seen in a, in a hot minute where Bloom's had to uh, really kind of earn and his stripes to get a kill here, 172 here on Longer and rising, but even three hits of fair, not going to be enough to finish. Okay, and Bloom still chasing oh, down, oh, but a back cheeky air. back air there from Longo, nearly taking the stock away from Bloom, but still not going to do it. But as we talked about, Bob is a big character, 202% goes for the upbow, takes the stock away from Bloom, and Longo holds a extremely thin lead, but a lead nonetheless. Yeah, that rage. Always going to help out really well for the final kill of the opponent. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, you have to be so, so careful, even in those little moments there. Like, that was just a sort of raw Saibi that he confirmed into the back of there. So he, those kind of minimal sort of interactions, you have to be so careful and aware of. Longo needs to be so just very, very kind of intricate of what he's doing. Oh. But, of course, all that being said, he's found a good gyro combo, getting 56 onto Bloom, but this, is where it starts to get a bit scary. Yeah, Longo had a little bit of a stage control there. So kind of a, you know, Bloom, I think, wants to fight Longo in the areas where he feels comfortable. Bloom's happy to go off stage. He's happy to sort of play the uh, the aerial combo, Marvel versus Capcom stuff. But so we're seeing Longo. Now we're going to see the up tilt. Great mash there from Bloom. Oh, I like. Oh! oh trying to bait him out of shield. And the gyro coming down as well. That could have been oh. a massive moment. But unfortunately, Blue finds a way in. The Witch Twist taking him up to the skies. Four there's not going to be enough height to take the stock just yet, but that was a lot of centers tacked on. Suddenly, Longo, who had a very nice lead, is just dissipated in an instant. I love the way that Longo very slightly mixed up the timing on his up B. Because I think Bloom was trying to set up an active area to cover you know, some of the ledge get up options. Longo. Did the slight mistiming on his, not mistiming rather, a slight different timing on his up B, and then went with an aggressive fair. Ah! Down smash, okay. Okay, not quite, but we are getting the witch twist. Bloom chase him out there. This is an extreme lasting situation. Oh. Bloom goes out once again. Has Longo got enough fuel to get past all this? He doesn't quite as the neutral just covers that entire range. It's that the... entire area, that belonged to Bayonetta. It's the, sometimes that's the joy of Smash Brothers compared to other <laughs> fighting games. We play a platform fighter, sometimes they're just fighting in the sky. Yeah. It's, it's full on Dragon Ball Z stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Rob is one of the few characters that probably can recover from that yeah. sort of distant range, but of course, he's burning up fuel and uh, Bloom with about seven different jumps. Up. Uh, wait, what? Wait, wait. 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 <laughs> what goes this? up must come down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my feet don't touch the ground. Okay, so I said earlier, raise your hand if you expected the cloud. But I think this time, I'm quite justified in saying, raise your hand if you ever expected a Sonic from Bloom. Because absolutely no one, and I mean no one, could have predicted this. It's a straight, <laughs> so it's a funny one for Bloom. I mean, I guess he's got the two games to play with. I think Bloom will take the risky option sometimes. He'll go game five and just go for the bail. Yeah. But yeah, interesting pick. I, I think we've seen him use Sonic once or twice before, but uh, let's see if uh, he can do it against someone of the magnitude of Longo. Bloom is no stranger to uh, causing upsets with bizarre characters against other top players. He's beating Hope with Lucario. He nearly, well, he took uh, Pelly pretty close with the uh, Lucario. Took a game at least. Yeah. Let's see how the Sonic does. This is the thing, and already doing a pretty good job of just being up close. I think the switch here is because Bloom 
recognize that Longo was definitely playing that more passive playstyle. He was trying he was trying to play outside of Bayonetta's range. And I think Bloom certainly did struggle to find ways in. And if it wasn't for kind of that extreme offstage game that they had at the end there, it definitely could have gone Longo's way. So here, Bloom has kind of thought, okay, I want to be someone who kind of plays, sort of can play right up in their face, but also has the speed to kind of just deal with if you want to play this zoning game. Like, I can just sort of play a ranged game if I need to. And that up air straight out of the Pelly playbook. Over the up B into the uh, the high up air to finish off longer. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, interesting. We're seeing more Sonic on our screens, which uh, I know you've used at home, absolutely <laughs> love. Fun fact, I remember we were talking randomly because Bloom plays so many different characters. Yeah. There was a conversation at the uh, the front of the stage earlier on in the tournament. Of, Gosh, guys, how, how far do we think Bloom would get if he just mirror matched everyone? Like, yeah. Who, who would be the uh, the players that would stop him? And Pelly, who sat right next to me, goes, well, he'd obviously lose to me. I'd wash him in the Sonic tour. <laughs> so maybe Loki, We might see I it. If, uh, we Bloom could Loki, see it. I wonder if Bloom Loki overheard Pelly and decided, you know what, I'm warming up this Sonic for the Sonic tour if I get to grand finals. But uh, he's got to get through Longo first, and he's... Uh, He's got a little bit of a percent deficit to make up. It's interesting as well because Bloom very early on, it towards when we kind of returned from sort of the pandemic hitting, obviously the sort of online tournaments and everything. So I think it was the very first invasion back in uh, Birmingham, uh, hosted by Team Regen. Bloom actually, I think he was facing against uh, SBF in uh, Widerside. And I think I opted to actually go for the Wario mirror match in the final game. It's the BM. Yeah. And <laughs> the thing is as well, I but Bloom, Bloom I've heard from GP before, Bloom sometimes does like to do this, to actually get a better grasp of the character that he's facing. So this potentially could be even Bloom mentally preparing for the next set if he has the face uh, Pelly in Grand Finals. So I was saying, okay, right. I think I like, I played this oh. character, I got a sort of bit of a grasp of what they oh. do. But regardless, while I was saying all of that. Yeah, he, needs to prep a bit. he needs to definitely prep yeah. a bit harder for he that needs a bit hard, Yeah. So. That recovery a little bit stanky, but uh, yeah, strange sort of way the air dodge interacted with the stage there, but uh, yeah, PS2 has some weird ledge stuff sometimes, but Longo with a lead here, firing some gyros, a few uh, close quarter tilts and lasers, you all know it and love it from Rob, but... Okay, good. There's, there's the back effort. Yeah, there. solid back edge to take the stock away, and again, this is not out of it yet for Bloom, 70%, so it's definitely not impossible to get back. Just got to find a way in. Longo not really letting him have the opportunity again. Just throwing down these gyros, going for these lasers. Not going to let the Sonic find a single way in. Yeah, Longo was just sat right on the ledge there saying, OK, here's a laser. Bloom, uh, Bloom avoids it or shields it. Oh, here's a gyro. Bloom yeah. avoids it or shield it. Bloom just edging closer, taking advantage of the extra stage control. But here's an offstage situation. Yeah, Bloom still able to make it back to Spider. Finds his way in as well. Gets a strong string of up airs. Just him up. But of course, this is still a lot of damage separated them. A full 100% between these two. Bloom has got to try and find a way in. Longer not letting it happen. The forward does connect. But again, this is all just small bits of damage here. It's not really kind of leading to too much. Meanwhile, Longo can just find a grab or something, and that will seal up the game. Yeah, that's the... Uh we said it before, the life of a Sonic playing with a deficit, not always the most fun, especially yeah. when you're playing against a character like Rob, who can box you out, but of course also has the big laser and gyro to, uh, to stuff out your approaches. Gets the net. Oh, oh and the sniper as well. American sniper, though. Story as old as time. And uh, Bloom chuckling. The Sonic experiment <laughs> has not paid off yet. So that's 2-1 now for Bloom. He's still one game away. It's still a set point, but... As is always the case when we're watching a Bloom set. What's the character pick? It's back to Bayonetta. It's back to Okay, Bayonetta. so yeah, just forget that last game really happened. You know, it, was just, it was just a fever dream. Bloom never went he Sonic. He just went Sonic yeah. just, just for the vibes. It's just for the fun of it, really. I kind of respect it. <laughs> but back to the Bayo. Yeah, back to the Bayo. It is time to finish up this set in uh, Bloom's eyes. But of course, Longo, you know, having to sort of had that game to sort of play and, you know, remember how the Bayonetta was as well. Could certainly seem like this game, especially if it goes the way it did in game two. But it's still a long way there, and Blongo has got to, to find you know, his damage all the while, obviously avoiding what Bloom wants to do, like that double side B there, which does lead to a small bit of damage. Good STI from Blongo, though, just avoid anything further. Yeah, and we saw in the winner's set, 
when uh, Bloom played against Pelly, starting off with the unorthodox uh, Lucario pick. He eventually did go back to the Bayo, but it was all a little bit, uh, a bit too late in the end. Yeah, exactly. So see if the Pelly, uh, if the Sonic experiment, yeah, actually you might buy him in the uh, run there, but of course, all that said, Bloom is still hanging on to a strong lead here, just trying to find that final hit to take the stock oh. away. The down end, not going to do it just yet. Sending only a longer, a little further away into the blast zone. All right, and then here comes, of course, the offstage shenanigans. Longo has a lot of different mix-ups. Great tech, though. A lot of good mix-ups in the air, the way he sort of times the, uh, of course, his double jump and his booster from his up B, but I'm going to uh, fall to Bloom there. Small lead here for, uh, for Bloom. Yeah, Bloom, we've got to hang on to this. Of course, Longo, again, still playing, keeping that passive play style, because even despite being down a stock, he really cannot risk returning to that sort of close quarters game because Bayonetta will absolutely win those in every single situation. Of course, all that said, Longo is not going to be able to find stocks through lasers and gyro alone. He's got to find a way yeah. in, which he tries to do with that down tilt there. Hope to catch the roll in with that down smash. But unfortunately, all it is met with is these witch twists. Send it up to the skies again. All right, here we go. More of the cutscenes from... Uh Bloom forever. We saw actually once that Longo got Bloom to around the sort of 120% mark. He's doing a little bit less zoning and sort of more trying to go for the fishing into the down tilts and the tech chases, trying to maybe force a kind of raw aerial or setup. All oh, very high and, there. Oh no, good SDR from Longo to get out there. But still, again, a lot of percentage. The witch time comes oh, out. But this is what's so scary about when using witch time on stage because there is an opportunity for them just to grab the ledge. But you know, Tolato's to the face. I'm putting my foot down. Yeah. I'm putting my foot down. I've had enough. Yeah, this is a really tricky position for Longo to be in. Tournament stock on the line here. Still yet to take a single one of Bloom's as well. You've got so much to play for, and Bloom is just not letting it happen. Yeah, I feel like uh, Longo lands a hit, gets a decent amount of oh, Wait, what? wait, wait. And Bloom. Uh... All right, check the disc. All right, check the disc. <laughs> What's going on? What even happened up there? This is it. Bloom, <laughs> Bloom controls the air, the sky. He will go to the deepest steps of the blast zones. He'll go to the very highest tops. And Longer trying to recover high. I'm not quite sure what happened. Maybe a hitbox <laughs> Genuinely, extension. I don't what know happened? what move happened there. Because it was I need so AR instant. On that one. I'm going to need an instant replay on that one from somewhere. But it was either way, so instant. It just... He just died. <laughs> he just died, but... That is Bloom moving on into losers finals, and we're going to. Uh, I've got to say, a great show into Longo, of course. Yes, not absolutely. quite probably the result he wanted, of course, yeah. trying to defend 